if you're a Linux user, you've probably at some point heard of eSpeak. eSpeak is basically the standard way of doing voice synthesization, maybe better known as text-to-speech under Linux. But from my experience, the results you get from eSpeak, while they get the job done, and if you're using it for, say, like a screen reader, the quality is fine. The results you get tend to be fairly robotic sounding. So today we're looking at another project. This is a project from the University of Edinburgh known as Festival. While these standard voices do still tend to sound fairly robotic, there is a lot of extra voice packs you can get your hands on and a lot of them sound considerably better. And if you're in the market for it, there is also some commercial voice packs you can purchase which sound actually really, really good. But let's actually see what this is all about. I wouldn't be covering this if it was just a TTS system. I don't really care too much about that. The main reason why I want to talk about this is the way that you actually configure it. Before we talk about that though, let's go over the basic usage. Now, if we want to just run it without worrying about any of the configuration, just basic TTS from something in our terminal, we can go and do this through some pipes. So let's go and echo out, for example, hello world, and if we go and pipe that into Festival, that isn't going to work by itself. We also need to include the dash dash TTS option to go and enable that and have a listen to this. Hello world. As you can see, it is still fairly robotic, but that is with the default voice. But you can also get it to read directly from a file. Now, we're going to be using the TTS option again. When you just use the TTS option without anything passed into it, it's going to expect there to be something from a pipe or redirected into it. But this option also accepts a file argument, so I don't actually have a file prepared. Let's just go and use a, uh, a random script that I have on my system. Hash slash user slash bin slash end python import xml dot entry dot elementary as it imports an I'm going to end that before it gets really, really annoying. Now you can actually run any of the interactive mode commands directly from this CLI input as well. That is going to be done with the dash dash pipe arguments. So one of the commands we have access to is going to be the say text command. Now, make sure you go and include the text you want to say inside of quote marks, not inside of apostrophes. That is very important for the configuration actually being used in this case. So I'm going to make it say this is some text. And if we then go and pipe that into festival and pass in the dash dash pipe argument, it's going to go and run that command. This is some text. And that leads us very nicely into the interactive mode. So just running festival without any arguments is going to open that up. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. So the way that you configure festival, you may have worked it out from what we did just before. The way you do everything in this application is through Lisp. Now, if you're one of the five people who use Lisp or you're an Emacs user, you might be saying that Lisp is not that exciting. But I cannot think of many applications besides Emacs that actually use Lisp for its configuration. And I am going to screw up saying Lisp many times throughout this video and I probably not going to cut it. So the way that Lisp works is kind of weird and it's part of the reason why you probably don't see it that much. So most languages you have the brackets for a function at the end of the function call. In the case of Lisp though, it actually wraps the function call with the brackets. So in the case of say text, that is a function call being made in Lisp and then the input to that is going to be whatever text we're going to type here. DSFS, DFS, DFS, D. That. Now to check what the default voice is, that can be done by using the voice underscore default variable, and by default is set to voice cal diphone. Now to change the voice, we first need to find out what other voices we actually have installed. So this can be done by looking at the voice dot list function, and as we can see, we have all of these options in here. It's not many choices, but there's plenty more that we can go and download. So let's go and swap this over to being uh, CMU US RMS CG. So you don't just go and write out the name of that. What you have to do instead is include a voice underscore before it, and then you can go and swap over to it. So I was going to pick this one right here, include the bracket at the end of it, and now it's going to go swap over to that. And let's have it say something like, this is now a different 
voice. And make sure you include the ending quote and the bracket in the correct location, otherwise it will not work. This is now a different voice. And that one sounds considerably better than the original voice did. And it can also still read from a file as well. That is going to be done with the TTS function. Then after that include the path to the file. This needs to be the full path. So including the shorthand for the home directory is not going to work. So I'm going to use slash home slash Brody. Then let's use the file that we used earlier. That is going to my timestamps file in my scripts directory. Then after that, the documentation doesn't explain this well, but the next value we're going to set to nil. I assume this is something else we can configure, but I have not been able to work out what it is. Anyway, let's go and run it like this. Now, I have noticed that it might take a while to start up when running it like this, but it will slash eventually slash start. User slash bin slash end python import XML dot entry dot element. And I'm going to stop that because that's really annoying. There is documentation built into the application that can be seen by running help. There's not really a ton that it says in here, but if you're unsure about anything, this is certainly going to help, at least to some extent. Now, if you want to go and quit out of the application, that can be done by pressing Control D, or as it says here, by running the quit function. Let's go and run the quit function, and then let's talk about actually getting ourselves extra voices. Now, this is going to depend on the distro you're on. On Arch Linux, it splits Festival into three main packages in the standard repos. There's a couple of others that exist in the AUR, but a lot of voices out there aren't actually packaged. So, on Arch, the Festival package gives you the application, but you don't get any extra voices except for the default one. If you want extra voices in the standard repos, there is Festival US and Festival English. Those will give you all of the voices that I currently have. As for other voices, unlike on something like Ubuntu where some of the other voices actually are packaged, you have to go and install them manually. Luckily, from what I can tell, manual installation it's a bit of a pain, but it's not that bad. One place we can go for some voices is the Festvox website, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. There's not a ton of extra voices here, but there is some extra ones you might want to try out. So we're going to go with the 2.4 sources, and then inside of the voices section, there's going to be a bunch of extra options in here. Now, some of these you may already have from the packages you went and downloaded. For example, I already have the RMS package and... AWB, I believe, but I don't believe I have the GKA option. So I'm going to go and download that. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to take that file. And when it's done, we're going to unarchive it and just dump it where the voice needs to be. So I'll cut back to when that's downloaded. Now that it's downloaded, let's go and untar that. So that is Festvox, whatever that says there. That's going to dump all of that into a folder known as Festival. So what we're going to be doing is doing a cp-r on festival slash lib slash voices slash us. And we're going to be taking the folder that those voices come in and then dumping that inside of slash user slash share slash festival slash voices slash us and then slash whatever the name that we had it here so us underscore gka underscore cg the voice name doesn't need to match when you copy it it's just going to keep it in line with stuff you download in the future if we go and run voice dot list that option we just added should be this let's go and use that voice set the voice to that one right there i have no idea how this is going to sound by the way this is the voice we just downloaded. Not too bad. Now there is both a local and a global configuration file, but for most people, the only thing you're going to want to configure is what the default voice currently is. Most of the other things are related to like working with your audio server and doing debugging stuff like that. So the local configuration file is going to be located in .festival RC. I don't actually have a, uh, a local configuration file, so let's go and modify the uh, the global version. So that is going to be in slash user slash share slash festival, and then inside of site init.scm, because this is a scheme list file. All of this 
as you can probably expect, is going to be configured through Lisp. And if you want to go and modify the default voice, we can go and uncomment this section and then modify this line right here. Now, if the application isn't working straight away, I'll leave a link to the Arch Wiki in the description down below, which has some basically troubleshooting stuff you can try out. Stuff like w getting it working with Pulse Audio, which in my case, I didn't need to do. It just worked straight away. Or some other things like how it may not be able to open up certain devices or audio is playing at the wrong speed and things like that. Before we go, I should probably show you an example of what the commercial voices actually sound like. So over on the University of Edinburgh website, they actually have a demo thing here. And this is what you might get. This is a commercial voice example. As you can see, it sounds great. Like, it's not perfect. Obviously, it's not perfect. But it does sound really, really good. That's going to be it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.